Hi guys, my name is Daniel and on this channel I talk about architectural visualization and art. In today's lesson we are going to be looking at the Corona ambient occlusion material. So what is the ambient occlusion material? Well, it's a material that basically adds a little bit of detail in areas where geometry meets. So just before we start, I'd just like to uh, have a little trivia question to see if anybody recognizes this color scheme that we have over here and what TV series this color scheme is where the dominant figure is pink and the subordinate figures are green. Does anybody actually know? If you get if you guess Squid Games, that's correct. <laughs> okay, so trivia over and let's get into the lesson. So ambient occlusion how do we create it well just going to hit m and go into the slate material editor and we are going to create a corona physical material just as a base material to apply to everything in our scene and we're just going to select these objects click select similar and just apply this base material to everything in our scene. So where can we find the Corona ambient occlusion material? Well, there's two ways to get it. One way is to just right click, go to uh, maps, Corona and Corona AO. That's over here, that'll create this node. Or you can just scroll down to the bottom and you can find it under Corona over here. There we go but we won't be using that one. And to apply it to our scene, all we need to do is we need to drag it and connect it into our base color. So then we select our Corona Emit Occlusion and we are going to use the color red just so that we can see the effect a little bit better in our viewport. Gonna select OK and over here you can see that it's already been applied to our scene. So over here the first uh, setting that we have is the occluded color so that will be the color of the effect. So either you can use a specific color or you can use a map and that can be any JPEG or any image that you have. Uh, secondly, we have the unoccluded color, so that is the base color. As you can see, that is the white beneath our uh, red. So all our geometry is essentially white with a red effect on it. Secondly is the max distance, so that is going to show us the distance of the effect. So we click one centimeter you can see that it's only applying it in a one centimeter distance where geometry essentially meets. Okay, so if we set that to 10, you can see that it's a larger effect. What we can also do if we set that to 50, for example, and you add a map in here, this map is not going to work the same as these two. These two are just... Uh, basic maps that are going to show up on your material whereas this map works as a mask so if we for example just click on that get a bitmap and select any of these masks you can see now that the effect is going to be masked so it looks more like a dirt effect on the geometry so that could give you some interesting results okay then we're going to go to our color spread for example and that is going to be the intensity of the effect that we have applied okay so if we go to 0 0.5 it's going to be half of one obviously okay and if we just remove our map over here and just go back to normal so the next one so we're going to just set this to say 0 0.2 so we can see it a little bit better and the next setting that we have is 
from outside so it's going to be calculating from outside so basically where this edge is over here it's calculating from this outside and it's going in if you click on the inside for example it will be the opposite so we just need to reduce this for a moment and now it's basically pushing from the inside of the mesh so i just want to see one more thing here let's go set this to 20 and that's covering everything inside inside and outside and now it's going to recalculate that edge so if we click on outside it's basically calculating from the base over here going up and from the meeting points on the outside of the sphere okay so depends on what your model is uh, you just have to test those out for yourself uh, ray directionality is essentially it's going to give you a harder edge so at the moment we have a gradient going from where the spheres are touching and where they're touching the floor you have a gradient going up the more you raise this up the harder the edge is going to be so you can see at a value of one it's going to give you a straight line and value of 0 0.5 it's going to start to give you a gradient and the next settings that we have is directional offset so if you want it just to go from a specific direction this is where you can set that uh, setting and that will push it off to one side and the next part that we have over here is the exclusions so if you just want, don't want to affect a certain object so say for instance these two spheres over here We'll take those two and we'll create a new material, chronophysical material, and we are just going to apply it to those two spheres and go to our, over here and we can use exclude list and you just add them by clicking this plus button. And now these spheres will not be affected by that corona ambient occlusion material so how can we apply this in a real life scenario well we can just go to a different scene over here and in this this is an interior that i've been working on and in this scene it's quite a well-lit scene and sometimes what you'll get is areas where geometry meets and you start to lose detail so over here we see this wall is meeting the ceiling we are starting to lose, lose detail and also here above the door we are starting to lose detail also above these uh, pillars over here or columns you can see these are areas that we could lose some detail and that is where we could use the ambient occlusion material just to add a little bit of a contact shadow between the two uh, pieces of geometry so all you do is you'd go to your scene we'll just use this uh, area over here to show as an example and we're just going to hit the material go to the material editor click m and you just add the corona ambient occlusion material into your diffuse the diffuse color as we did before is in our unoccluded and usually for this type of thing you use about uh, a distance of about 10 millimeters so one centimeter and we would render this out or render everything out to the desired effect and in Photoshop, we would come and switch this effect on. So the little patch that we rendered was over here. So we don't see 
the uh, geometries meeting but with the ambient occlusion you can see that it adds that little bit of detail into the joint over here and it's a little bit more visible all right guys so that's the corona ambient occlusion material if that helped you please consider subscribing and have a great day bye